Every year, over 100 million small arms are produced worldwide. But only one rifle has truly become a legend. The AK-47, a symbol of simplicity, reliability, and an incredible history. It can be assembled and disassembled in minutes, even in the harshest conditions. And that's precisely why it earned the nickname, the weapon that never fails. In this video, we'll take a first-time look behind the scenes of its production, from a raw steel blank to the final tests at the shooting range. You will see the hidden processes that are usually not shown, and you will understand why the AK-47 has become the most recognizable rifle on the planet. When I entered the factory, I immediately felt that I had stepped into a place with a huge history. The air smelled of metal and oil everywhere, and the sounds of working machines created an atmosphere of important work. In this video, I want to show you how the AK-47 is made, starting from the raw materials and ending with the final assembly. We will see how a rifle, known worldwide for its reliability and simplicity, is born from ordinary materials. Believe me, you won't want to miss this exclusive look at the production process. On the production floor, I noticed how ancient methods are combined with modern technologies. Here, they strive to preserve traditions, but also make the process as efficient as possible. Next to the forging areas stood modern machines controlled by computers. The craftsmen here don't just work with metal. They put their soul into every detail, turning it into a part of a legendary weapon. It seems that every corner of this factory is steeped in history and the pursuit of perfection. The manufacturing of barrels is one of the most important and complex stages. The barrel is the heart of the rifle, and its accuracy is very important. I saw how large metal blanks are turned into hollow tubes with the help of special machines. But the real magic happens later, when spiral grooves are cut inside the barrel. These grooves help the bullet to spin so it flies more accurately. This is a very complex process, requiring enormous precision. Even a small mistake can ruin everything, so attention to detail here is at the highest level. I saw how the masters perform this work with pride and responsibility. Each barrel undergoes numerous checks to ensure it meets all standards. Engineers use special instruments to measure and check the inner surface of the barrel. It really looks like a scientific investigation, because even the slightest defect can affect the accuracy of a shot. They check the barrels with ultrasound, measure the diameter, and look for cracks. All this is done to make every rifle as reliable as possible. At the factory, they use both old methods and new technologies. For example, the stocks for the rifles are still made by hand from wood. The masters choose the best wood birch or walnut and process it to be strong and durable. They sand the stocks and cover them with special compounds to make them look beautiful and be strong. This shows that traditions and respect for history are very important here. At the same time, for modern models, polymers are used, which make the rifle lighter and more convenient. Injection molding machines produce plastic stocks with high precision, which helps to reduce weight and improve the weapon's characteristics. This combination of old and new makes the AK-47 truly unique. Quality control is a very important part of the work at the factory. Every detail goes through numerous checks. This is not just a visual inspection, but a real process using ultrasonic tests and magnetic particle inspection. All this is necessary to ensure that there are no defects in the parts that could affect the weapon's performance. Every assembled rifle is checked at a special shooting range to ensure it shoots accurately and reliably. I stood behind protective glass and watched as engineers tested each rifle. First, they checked how all the mechanisms worked, and then they conducted a test firing. This is very important, because even a small problem can cause the weapon to fail at a critical moment. If something goes wrong, the rifle is sent back for rework.
Engineers also collect data from the tests to understand what can be improved in the production process. One of the engineers told me that all test results are recorded and analyzed. This allows for continuous improvement of the quality and reliability of the weapon. This process never stops. Every employee at the factory tries to do their part as well as possible. I was amazed that they don't just follow instructions here, but constantly strive to improve every detail, making the AK-47 even better. Applying a protective coating is another important stage of production. This helps to make the weapon durable and protected from external influences. At the factory, they use different coatings, traditional bluing, which makes the metal black and matte, and modern coatings that protect against rust. I watched as workers applied these coatings, and it was clear that they do it with great attention to detail. This is another example of how old and new methods are combined here to create the best weapon. The factory also makes magazines for the rifles. Magazines are an important part of any rifle, and they are given a lot of attention here. They make magazines from durable materials to withstand great loads. Each magazine is checked to ensure that it works reliably and will not fail in combat. I saw engineers inserting magazines into the rifle and checking the feeding of cartridges. This is another important stage that shows how they approach quality here. The most impressive stage is the final testing. In a special shooting range, each rifle is checked by firing it. I stood behind bulletproof glass and watched as engineers fired the rifles, testing them for durability and accuracy. Each rifle goes through a series of tests, single shots, automatic fire, and testing in different conditions. If something goes wrong, the rifle is sent for rework. Engineers collect data from these tests to understand how to improve the weapon. This is a continuous process that helps to make the AK-47 so reliable. When I was leaving the factory, I couldn't stop thinking about the complex history of this weapon. On the one hand, it has become a symbol of struggle and revolutions, and on the other hand, it has been used in wars and destruction. Having seen how much labor and skill is invested in each rifle, I realized that this is not just a weapon, but the result of engineering talent and human labor. Every detail is created with great attention, and this makes the AK-47 something more than just a rifle. It is a symbol of history, traditions, and the pursuit of perfection. The AK-47 is not just a weapon, it is a part of history. It was created to be reliable and easy to use. It can be disassembled and assembled in minutes, even in difficult conditions. This makes it popular among military personnel around the world. The simplicity of its design and high reliability are what make the AK-47 so special. Having seen how it is produced, I understood that every detail matters. Every screw, every barrel, and every stock is created with enormous attention to detail. Imagine this, a single piece of steel that can hold the weight of a hundred fully loaded semi-trucks. How? It's all about a shape engineers call the I-beam. This isn't just metal, it's the backbone of our cities, born from rusted scrap and forged in lightning, fire, and thousands of tons of pressure. But here's the kicker. Why are brand new I-beams almost entirely made of the past? Cars from the 70s, rails from the 30s, even armor from World War II. All of it could be holding up a modern skyscraper. Stick around and you'll learn a secret that will change the way you think about the power of steel. The genius of the I-beam is its shape. The real heavy lifting is carried by the top and bottom parts, so that's where most of the metal is packed, in the flanges. The thin web in the middle just keeps them locked in place. This gives you maximum strength for minimum weight. And that strength is just insane. A single heavy I-beam, set up right, can handle loads of hundreds of thousands, sometimes even millions of pounds. Picture a whole line of fully loaded semi-trucks, all parked on one single piece of steel. That's real power. This story doesn't start in some shiny workshop. It starts in a massive, rusty, noisy yard that looks like a graveyard for metal giants. 
This is a scrapyard. Mountains of old cars, chopped up rail cars, building frames, and industrial junk are all waiting for a second chance. A giant crane with a powerful electromagnet drops down on the pile, and with a metallic groan, tons of old iron leap up to meet it. This scrap is the main ingredient. It gets loaded into a huge steel basket and sent to the melt shop for its trial by fire. Steel is the undisputed champion of recycling. The recycling rate for structural steel in the US is a whopping 98%. That means nearly every piece of steel from torn down buildings, old bridges, and scrapped ships gets put back to work. On average, a new I-beam made today is 90% recycled metal. This creates an incredible, endless loop. A skyscraper going up today could have a piece of a 70s muscle car, a 1930s railroad track, and even armor from a World War II battleship inside it. This isn't just a hunk of steel. Its concentrated history melted down and reborn for a new tour of duty. So these numbers aren't just stats. They're the silent language our cities are built on, a language of strength, efficiency, and the almost endless life of metal. Every year, the United States cranks out over 5 million tons of structural steel, and the lion's share of that is I-beams. That's a number so big, it's hard to get your head around. Let's try. The steel in the famous Golden Gate Bridge weighs about 83,000 tons. That means, in one year, American mills produce enough beams to build over 60 Golden Gate Bridges. The heart of the plant is the electric arc furnace. A giant kettle, the size of a small house, where our scrap metal is dumped with a thunderous crash. Three massive graphite electrodes, thick as ancient trees, are lowered in from the top. And then the operator hits the juice. An electric arc, basically a man-made lightning bolt, erupts between the electro tips and the metal with incredible force. The shop fills with a deep, bone-rattling roar, and the light from the arc is blinding. The temperature inside instantly shoots up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The metal doesn't stand a chance. It starts to melt, turning into a boiling, blazing lake of steel. Special additives are tossed into this molten bath to get the exact grade of steel needed. Strong, but flexible enough to handle massive loads. When the steel is ready, it's time to turn this liquid river into something solid. The molten metal is poured into a continuous casting machine. The blazing liquid flows into a special water-cooled copper mold. As it passes through, the outer layer of steel freezes, forming a thin skin. Next, this still mushy on the inside ingot is continuously pulled downwards through a chamber of water spray where hundreds of nozzles blast it, forcing it to solidify all the way through. What crawls out of the machine is an endless, glowing red, massive steel billet. This is called a bloom. Automated torches hiss to life and slice off pieces to the right length, say 20 or 30 feet. This is our blank, our piece of dough, that we're about to shape into a beam. These hot, but now solid blooms are sent to the next furnace, the reheating furnace. It's like a giant tunnel with a fire roaring inside. The blank moves slowly through it, where its temperature is cranked back up to the perfect working heat, around 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. It becomes soft and pliable, like clay, ready for the most important step, rolling. And this is where the real show begins. The bloom, glowing a brilliant orange, rolls out of the furnace and hits the rolling mill. This is a series of giant steel rollers, like massive rolling pins, lined up one after another. But these rollers aren't flat. They have special grooves cut into them, shaped to gradually form an eye beam. The bloom slams into the first set of rollers. They squeeze it with thousands of tons of force, making it a little thinner and longer. Out the other side, it's grabbed by the next set, which squeezes it from a different angle, 
starting to form the flanges and the web of the future beam. And so, step by step, passing through dozens of these roller sets, our shapeless billet is stretched and molded, taking on that familiar eye shape right before your eyes. It's an incredible sight. A piece of glowing steel that started at 20 feet long gets stretched into a fiery ribbon hundreds of feet long. The whole mill is filled with a symphony of bangs, screeches, and the hiss of water keeping the rollers cool. When the beam exits the final, finishing roller, it has the perfect shape and dimensions, down to a fraction of an inch. Hot, long, like a fire serpent, it travels down a roller conveyor to a massive cooling bed. This is a giant rack where the beam slowly cools, letting its heat radiate into the air. As it cools, the metal shrinks a bit, and sometimes the beam can get a slight warp. To fix that, after it's cooled down, it's sent to a straightener. This thing is like a giant steel chiropractor, passing the beam through a set of rollers that align it until it's perfectly straight. So, we have a perfectly straight, long beam, but it's not ready to ship yet. Time for the finishing touches. First, it's cut to the specific lengths the customer ordered. This is done by giant saws with blades six or seven feet across. With a deafening scream and a shower of sparks, the saw cuts through the thick steel in seconds. Then, every single beam goes through a tough quality control check. Inspectors measure its geometry, and special ultrasonic machines scan the metal to make sure there are no hidden cracks or flaws inside. Only then does the beam get its marking, its birth certificate, with the steel grade, size, and batch number. The finished inspected beams are picked up by giant cranes and stacked in the yard, or loaded directly onto special rail cars or trucks. And just like that, this steel backbone, born from rusty scrap, forged through fire and pressure, is ready to ship out to a job site, to become the silent but incredibly strong skeleton for a skyscraper that will scrape the clouds, or a bridge that will connect two shores. Standard beams on a construction site can be anywhere from a few inches to three feet tall. But then there are the real monsters, the so-called jumbo sections, used in the most critical spots of skyscrapers. Their height can be over four feet, and their weight is something else. The heaviest ones can weigh over 800 pounds per foot. Think about that. Every foot of that beam weighs as much as three grown men. And a standard length for these things is 60, 80, or even 120 feet. A single one of those beams can weigh as much as a battle tank. 